Good morning, and in today's video, I want to talk about a project that I'm interested in, and I kind of like the direction that it's going, and why I think it is better than banana. And that's not necessarily to bring any hate on banana, because I think there are a lot of great things that can be done and have been done with banana, and I still think that it is a beautiful project. But for me, I think this project has a few advantages. So one big advantage of this project is that it is not sex linked. If you're familiar with banana, you know that it is sex linked. And that basically means that if you use a female banana, you can produce both males and females. Those males will be female makers. Sometimes those bananas can produce male bananas and those male bananas from that will then be male makers. And then you have the very low likelihood of producing a female banana from a male maker. So you can kind of get stuck producing only male bananas from those pairings. And that can be used for some advantages. Another big benefit to the Rainbow Project is that it is a recessive gene versus a incomplete dominant gene, which basically just means that there's a little bit more longevity in the project. So with Rainbow being a recessive project, that does mean that getting to the end result of projects could take longer. But overall, I think you're going to be benefited from the fact that it's not so easily reproducible. And overall, the value of the project is gonna be more stable long-term. Another huge benefit that I can see with Rainbow is the fact that you kind of have banana to gauge how a project is gonna look. You have you know, all these different looks and all these different projects that have already been done with banana and you know that they look good. So by doing those same things or similar things with Rainbow, you're pretty much already setting yourself up for success and you already know that it's gonna be a good looking project. So let's talk a little bit about what Rainbow is compared to. So I have heard people say it looks like Ultramel, which I think the colors are far, far too different from a Rainbow to an Ultramel. Ultramels are just darker. And overall, I think just the type of albino that is an Ultramel is not the same look you get in a Rainbow. So candy and lavender. I think that that is probably one of the more accurate descriptions, um, except Rainbow has a lot more oranges. Now, I think the, you know, Candy and uh, Candinos have a little bit more of the, the purple color, especially at a younger age than Lavenders do, you know, once they start coloring up anyway. And I think that can look very similar to Rainbow. However, the base body color you don't have the same kind of orange and creams that you would in Rainbow. So, you know, as babies, they may look, you know, somewhat similar, but again, they're still not gonna have that same kind of pop. The third and most likely comparison, and the main reason for this video, is banana. Now, I do think that banana and rainbows do look fairly similar. Now, that you know changes as the animals get older. I think a baby banana looks very similar to what a rainbow looks like. The big benefit for rainbow here is they maintain that look throughout life. Like they just keep those same colorations. Meanwhile, bananas, they kind of lose that purple color and it kind of turns into something else. Don't really quite know how to describe it, but it's definitely not the same purple that it once was. Also with banana, you end up having animals that as they get older, they end up spotting up. They, you know, lose that contrast. They often lose that bright kind of pop that they once had. And that again, is I think where there's a huge, huge benefit and, you know, overall better look you know, for the rainbow animal. So as babies, I do think the rainbow does look quite similar to a banana. But as the bananas age, 
they lose that contrast, that purple that once was now becomes some other color. I don't even quite know how to describe it, but it definitely loses that pop. Same thing, those oranges, they fade. You know, they're, they're not as punchy. They don't have as much contrast. They lose a lot of that initial oomph. And, you know, not to say that most, you know, ball python snakes or whatever don't as they age, but it's definitely a pretty big difference. Not to mention all the spotting that happens, you know, during, uh, you know, during the whole aging process for bananas, which funny enough, that's kind of how they get their name, right? You know, bananas start out nice and yellow, but pardon me as I die, just went up a small hill. But bananas, as they get older, they go from that bright yellow to developing spots. And the same thing happens with banana ball pythons. And that's why I think the end result of an adult rainbow looks better. They don't have that same spotting. They maintain contrast. They keep the purples, they keep the oranges. Now, like I mentioned in the beginning, I don't want this to be some heat filled rant on banana because that's not the case. I think there are a lot of really pretty bananas, really pretty banana combos, and some of them end up looking pretty amazing. It all depends on what you want to put into them. So a girl I produced this last year, she's a banana fire lesser leopard clown. I do not think that you would get the same look in a rainbow with that animal. Of course, you know, time will tell, you know, there hasn't been a lot done with rainbow. And I think that's kind of one of the biggest benefits. There really is a lot of room for opportunity to produce different things, to see where different things go, and overall a lot of experimentation. I don't think that you would get the same creamy look, but you know, who knows? It's definitely possible. Lesser and fire, you know, both can kind of mute color. Now, one interesting comparison would be that animal that Justin from Canova produced. The, where are my notes here? Red stripe yellow belly Wookiee coral glow clown. I'm sure everybody remembers it. It was the, uh, you know, tied for, you know, top number one spot in one of their most, uh, you know, beautiful productions, I think of 2023. And it's hard to argue that animal was phenomenal as a hatchling, as it's gotten older and basically breeding size, it looks amazing. And I think in reality, that's the key with most of these projects, the darker animals hold more contrast and they look better as they become adults. So it would be interesting to see that same combination with rainbow, because even that one has developed some spots. So it's kind of where I stand, I guess as a, uh, you know, summary towards the end. The pros, not sex linked, recessive, adds a little bit more longevity doesn't really spot out. Cons, they are more costly and you are pretty much gonna have to do everything from scratch and from the ground up. And I know, you know, a lot of people in the uh, reptile breeding, you know, hobby, whatever, they uh, kind of lack patience. So, you know, patience is definitely needed and I think you will see you know, good results if you take time and, you know, try and produce, you know, your own path and, um, you know, see your own, I guess, thoughts or plans to uh, fruition. Either way, that is it for today. Feel free to, uh, you know, check us out on Instagram, Nixon Reptiles and uh, Morph Market to find an animal for a new or existing project. 
right, thanks again for taking your time to watch this video and we will see you in the next one.